Look, um, do these speed reductions for reducing air pollution actually work? And I'm not just thinking about the 60 mile an hour on this stretch of the M1, but also the 20 mile an hour limits in Wales and London. Do, do these speed reductions actually work in terms of cleaning up our air, Ross? Um, do they actually clean up the air? Well, um, probably marginally, if you, you go to a slower speed, you, you will um, emit fewer emissions. Um, I think the uh, what, what's important about reducing emissions is to keep engines um, at, at going at a steady rate. So if you keep the traffic flowing better, it will um, reduce emissions. So, I mean, you know, if you've got a free flowing motorway, you're going to get better air than if you've got people stopping, starting, stopping, starting and, and all that stuff. So um, in as much as, uh, uh, you know, a, a lower speed limit helps to maintain traffic flow, then it, it will probably, you know, have some effect on um, air quality. But um, th there's the fairness element as well. I, I, I'm all in favour of speed cameras. We quite properly have um, speed limits and, of course, they need to be enforced. But what we shouldn't have is the element of trickery. And what we've got with speed, uh, with these smart motorways, is these um, speed limits, which are variable, they change at very, very short notice, advertise only on overhead gantries. You might be driving beneath a gantry and suddenly it flicks down from 70 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour. Now that they're supposed to be attuned to levels of traffic. So if there's a lot of traffic, they'll reduce the speed limit. But, you know, as we know, they're not as smart as they're made out to be. And often you get to a 50 mile an hour speed limit. Actually, the motorway is pretty empty. And what it sort of reduces this sort of... It, but so there's a lot of uncertainty in the mind of the motorist. So, well, you know, is this 50 mile an hour speed limit for real? What's it here for? And it introduces us almost a lack of respect for the speed limit if they're imposed, um, you know, sort of at whim, willy nilly, and they're confusing the motorists. And I don't doubt that's got quite a lot to do with why so many of these fines were issued on one stretch of the M1 between. Sheffield and Rotherham. Of course, it, you know, speed limits often about safety. Well, if we really want to induce safety, increase safety better, um, you know, the thing would be to do away with these wretched smart motorways altogether and put back um, uh, hard shoulders as they used to be. I mean, my car broke down on the M1 last year and um, suddenly well, we were all stopped because there was something obstructing the carriageway. And when I went to restart the car, it wouldn't start. Now, unfortunately, I was able to go over to the police and tell them what had happened. They towed me to the hard shoulder and I wait for a breakdown van. But, you know, what if there'd been no hard shoulder there? It was absolutely horrific experience. And, um, and Ross, you know, quite we've had a lot people these, killed on these Quite motorways. a lot of these fines that have been issued have been for people ignoring the Red Cross, which is the signal that a lane is closed. Now, of course, the reason those Red Crosses that no one should ignore them is often because there is no hard shoulder on these smart motorways, you find stranded vehicles in an active part of the motorway. Smart motorways, have, there are many campaigners out there who say they are dangerous. Lots of people have lost their life because of collisions with vehicles being stopped, not on the hard shoulder, but in active parts of the motorway. You say that what should happen is we just go back to a, a normal situation uh, historically, where you have a three or a four lane motorway and a hard shoulder, how easily could the government do that, given that we seem to have spent every single year since 2010 on various sections of the motorway, digging up the hard shoulder and turning it into carriages? That's 14, 15 years worth of disruption. I know because I've driven through it. Uh, do we have to have another 14 or 15 years of disruption to go back to normal motorways then? Um, well, you could just permanently close the inline, inland, uh, sorry, in the inner lane of um, motorway, smart motorway, simply by flicking a switch, by putting up a permanent red cross, of course. I mean, that would reinstate the hard shoulder at an instant. Um, you know, I, I think the, the money has been incredibly wasted on this project. And I don't want to see any more wasted, more money wasted in this way. And, you know, it's not just doing away the hard shoulder in many cases the lanes have become narrower there's this horrible stretch of the m25 now on the northern flank in hertfordshire where 
it's been increased to four lanes, but they're four narrower lanes and you really feel sort of uncomfortable driving along there. And, um, you know, I say I'm in favour of speed limits for safety, but they should, the, the, you know, the, the way that we're doing this and smart motorways is not increasing safety. And we've had these dreadful accidents where people have broken down. Now, as you say, the Red Cross is supposed to jump up instantly and close yeah. that lane, but it doesn't always happen. And, um, you know, the, the sort of smart systems which are supposed to be installed on these motorways often aren't installed. And it's left to uh, somebody, a human being sitting in a control centre, spotting what's going on. And often they haven't spotted what's going on. Ross, and the lane has remained open for Ross, you know, many it sounds minutes. Like, it sounds like not again. just motorist wallets being squeezed, but the lane's being squeezed. Thank you there to Ross Clark. Uh, the author of How an Irrational Target Will Impoverish You, Help China and Won't Even Save the Planet. Thank you very much for calling in to Talk TV. Um, Andy, obviously these smart motorways, tragically people have lost their lives on, lives on them. Do you think if we have a Labour government it's something that they'll change or do you think they're here to stay? I, I don't think it's something you can really change now. It's kind of become so part of the infrastructure. It would cost so much and cause so much disruption to the infrastructure of... You know, the M1, it, it's just, it's such a, it's a, it's a real nightmare policy-wise because a lot of people hate it, but a lot of people hate the process that will have to go through to change it. So it, it's, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place <laughs> with smart motorways. We close, you think an election issue for the Conservative Party and the war on motorists? Do you think that's going to get people to rush out and vote? I think it would in certain areas, and I think it's always one that you need to, to keep under your hat, but I don't think it's... The main issue, I think, there are. But it is the government's war on motorists. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, it is. But do you really want to highlight that to everybody, saying, "Look what we're doing"? Hey, let's put it on a leaflet, shall we? Because I think you're really going to come out a cropper with that one. So no, leave that one alone.